And now, ladies and gentlemen, Tom's Hit Parade proudly presents William Shatner Speak Sings the Classics. And what it all comes down to is that I haven't got it all figured out just yet. Because I've got one hand in my pocket, and the other one is giving a peace sign. That's not it. And the other one is giving a high five. That's wrong too. Greetings one and all and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time for Bargain Bag once again. Yes, we are inching ever closer to the inevitable conclusion of Bargain Bag. Barring any unforeseen wonderful circumstances that will allow me to continue it beyond the end of this year. But anyway, yes, Bargain Bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags, seven CDs each, from the late Skips Records and CD World. Uh, in between opening the bags, I will talk about a CD that I have found or that you might find in the bargain section of a retailer near you, whoever happens to sell music that you like to shop at. But before any of that, I will break down what I found in last month's pair of bargain bags. From In rough order, from cast-offs to keepers, let's go ahead and get started. Now, these first two I did not listen to for obvious reasons. First of all, this is the third time that this classical compilation has shown up in a mystery CD grab bag. Skip must have had loads of them, stacks of them, left over unsold that he decided to shove into bags during his going out of business sale, I can only assume. But, uh, yeah, uh, classical compilations are classical compilations, you know, kind of usually meh, and uh, even more so because I've already listened to that one before. Then uh, we have... The album Remember by Rusted Root, which I wasn't sure if I actually had this one before when I filled my last bargain bag, and yes, I do already have it. Uh, not to mention, this CD is actually pretty darn scuffed up, so it's probably going to go straight into the Goodwill pile. So Then we have another CD that actually made an appearance before. I believe this was way back in my first year of bargain bag. Mother May I, with their album Splitsville. This was a, uh, not quite power pop, indie pop, indie rock group. Uh, they're okay. Um, it's It was kind of when I re-listened to it this time, it was kind of obvious why I did not decide to keep it last time. Actually, I think I kept it for a short time, and when I listened to it again, I got rid of it, and yeah, no reason why. They're not bad. They're just kind of meh, you know, as, as far as indie rock goes. And this next one, uh, I've got to say, this was probably one of the weirdest CDs I've ever had in a bargain bag. I guess you pronounce their name Coppice? I would assume. And yes, this is what the cover looks like. And this was very weird, kind of droney noise kind of stuff. You know, uh, not really much of any form or structure to the songs, not that I could tell anyway. And, you know, very, very, very avant-garde. I mean, we're talking way out on the avant-garde end of the th of things. And not that I don't like avant-garde stuff to an extent. I mean, I've, I've got a few CDs that kind of defy categorization. But this one is just way out there, way beyond my capacity to really enjoy it. Just not my thing. Uh, so those of you who might be fans of noise rock, very weird stuff, it's beyond description. Let me just put it that way. But yeah, look them up, see if they're available on streaming, and uh, see what you think of this album, because uh, I didn't think much of it, sorry to say. Then we have a country artist, John Brannon. Uh, not bad, but still just not enough, not interesting enough for me to keep. This was late 80s. No, early 90s, 1993. By my experience so far, the early 90s has probably been the most uninteresting era of country music. Limited though my knowledge is. No, full disclosure on that. Then we have Peppertown. I believe that's the name of the group. Uh, their album is Firefly, or it might be the other way around. Um, it's okay stuff. It is kind of country-ish, country folk, sort of. Uh, but still, you know, like a lot of these things, just not interesting enough for me to really glom onto it and want to keep the CD. I have been shedding a lot of CDs lately, so whereas I've said before, stuff has to have a real interesting sound for me to want to keep it, it's probably even more so now uh, that I've been getting rid of CDs. So, uh, yeah. It's okay stuff. They're, they're totally competent at what they do. Just, you know, not my kind of thing. And then these next two are kind of similar uh, and not just because they both happen to be solo female artists, uh, but the first one here, uh, E.J. Waters. Uh, she's not bad. Um, she struck me at first as being kind of basically a cross between Melissa Etheridge and the Indigo Girls. I, I'm not sure. I have albums by both of those artists, but I've never really uh, analyzed them, listened to them enough, enough to, or it's been a long time, to tell if 
they have similar vocal stylings to each other, Melissa Etheridge and the Indigo Girls, but uh, the instrumentation is kind of like halfway between the rock of Melissa Etheridge and the acoustic folk pop of the Indigo Girls. So basically, if you like either of those artists, you might like uh, E.J. Waters. I would uh, suggest checking out E.J. Waters. And then uh, kind of similar to E.J. Waters, we have Patty Larkin with her album Perishable Fruit. Uh, again, not bad, just not quite enough for me to really want to keep it. Uh, same kind of stuff basically as E.J. Waters, but a bit closer, leans a bit more to the Indigo Girl side of things. So a bit more on the acoustic folk pop kind of thing. So, but yeah, I, I might check out a different album of uh, uh, Patty Larkin. She just kind of has that, a bit of a potential, but just this album just didn't grab me. And then this next one is also, well, kind of like the uh, previous two artists. Uh, the vocalist is a woman, but the in instrumentalists are men. She's backed by men. And uh, this is a group called The Mary Janes. And uh, this is the album Flame. Uh, not bad. It's kind of country folk, so similar to uh, E.J. Waters and Patty Larkin. Um, the vocalist's voice reminds me a lot of Stevie Nicks. So that's going to compel me to at least listen to it once more, just to see if I really like it. Uh, I cannot think of any tunes that really jumped out at me uh, that as I read the track listing, so nothing really sticks in my mind about it, but uh, maybe it'll grow on me if I give it one or two more listens before I actually get rid of it. So, yeah, not bad stuff. And then we have uh, something a little bit different here off the beaten path. It's uh, Spanish language stuff. All the lyrics are in Spanish. It is an artist named Joselo with the album Lejos, and it's not bad. It's actually um, kind of jangle pop-ish, which, of course, when you look at a, a Latin band, that's not something that you expect to hear, is something in the jangle pop vein. You know, I was expecting more traditional Latin guitars and uh, Latin rhythms and stuff. So that made it kind of interesting. Uh, but the guy's voice, the, the voice of the singer, is rather off-key most of the time, so I'm not sure if I'm going to listen to it once more. I probably going to get rid of it, but I kind of hesitate to get rid of it because I'm, I'm thinking, for some reason, I think it might grow on me. I don't know if just because it's in Spanish and, you know, I don't have much stuff in Spanish, it would be nice to keep it to kind of give that uh, variation to my collection. But yeah, I'm going to give him one more listen to see if his voice grows on me at all. But uh, yeah, rather off-key singing, sorry to say. Then we have an indie rock kind of group here, uh, Getaway Cruiser with their self-titled, yeah, self-titled album. Not bad, but yeah, just typical indie rock, just not much of anything to really set it off from the pack. Uh, not bad, it was what, uh, late 90s, 1998, so yeah, I can't really say much of anything about it. Yeah, it was okay. And now these final three are definitely going to be keepers. Uh, the one or two before that you probably could tell my from my talking about them more kind of on the fence, on the bubble, so to speak. But yeah, I like these three enough to want to keep them. Here we have Treehouse with their album Nobody's Monkey. Uh, it's kind of indie pop, indie rock, a little bit on the folk music kind of thing. This was, I believe, their first album. Miracle Divide, I think it was one that I enjoyed. And uh, A Million Places at Once, that was one of the really good ones. Uh, Losing Tonight, that was another really good one. Northern Rainbow, I kind of like that one. So, yes, I'm definitely going to listen to this one a few more times. It may end up in my keepers for the year, by year's end. Then we have uh, Baby Lemonade, I believe that's the name of the uh, artist. 68% pure imagination. I, I kind of made a joke in my last video about, well, can't you get more than 68%? But I gotta say, it sure sounds like they put more than 68% of uh, pure imagination into, into it. This is a lot of fun. It's very fun, power pop kind of stuff. Uh, a bit of the Beach Boys on a few of the tracks, I gotta say. So yeah, it's got kind of those those jangly harmonies kind of stuff, but with a little bit of uh, electric guitar every now and then. So. Oh, Brooke and the Sandman. I think that was one of the uh, the Beach Boys-ish songs that really got my attention. But yes, I'm going to have a lot of fun re-listening to this one a few more times. Uh, very, very, very fun. And then the last one, which uh, I kind of had a feeling I was going to enjoy uh, once I read up on them a little bit on Wikipedia. Not so much when I uh, opened the CD out of the bargain bag. But yeah, Papa Vegas. This is kind of the, the winner for this month. Uh, they are not as much new metal uh, rap kind of stuff as I thought they were going to be, and actually I don't recall hearing any rap in this at all, so it's very much still a very much indie rock. So yeah, very enjoyable, and this was their one and only album, so I kind of wonder what happened, why they didn't uh, keep going. don't know if it was uh, purely record sales or if some other stuff was going on, but I enjoyed this one. Yeah, Papa Vegas, Hello Vertigo is the name of the album, so yeah, go ahead and give it a try, I would say. 
Okay now, with no further ado, and without putting it off any longer either, let's go ahead and uh, pry open the first of the two mystery tea grab bags for the month of August. It's August already. Weird, huh? Let's cut off the top here as I lay the scissors down on the Spotlight CD, hoping I didn't scratch it. I can replace the cases, no problem. Here is your customary peekaboo-ish. And now let's see what we've got in here. First CD. We have Kiyoshi Graves with the album Chase. Something I have never heard of before. I definitely look forward to listening to that. As usual, some of these just, I can't comment on them at all because I don't know what they are. Then we have Georgie Porgy with his a, a CD single, or is it an album? It's got 11 tracks. Oh, it's got a bunch of remixes on it. Uh, Sunshine is the name of it. So yes, it's going to be get very boring for me, I know, just because it's a bunch of remixes of the same song, it looks like. So that's going to be boring. Who knows if I'm going to like the the, the, the parent song. I don't know, Georgie Porgy, I'm holding not holding out a whole lot of hope for liking it with an artist name like that. But then I didn't hold out much hope for Lady Gaga when I first heard of her. And now look, I've got all of her CDs. And we have, I, I have no idea what this is, Alias Tracier or Tarsier, Plane That Draws a White Line. You've got me, folks. I have no idea what this is. So, oh, and oh, this is another remix. Looks like different songs, remixes of different songs. So it's, yeah, it's kind of like it. an EP of alternate mixes and stuff. Then we have, Oh, an organist by the name of Carlo Curley. Uh, the, the album is called Amazing Grace, so a bunch of songs, uh, classical stuff and other stuff uh, done on organ. So, yeah, some Sousa with his Liberty Bell March. Uh, we got we got Mendelssohn on here. Another classical album that I have never seen before. Not, not your typical classical compilation, but an actual artist. Then we have Grief and God's Amazing Love. Gee, I wonder if this is a Christian album. Anyway. Oh, Messages by Dennis Cochran, Songs by Cynthia L. Harrod. So it must be a uh, hi either, either a hybrid of songs and spoken word, or messages just means lyrics. So I'll give that one a listen, but I probably, I don't guarantee that I will get through the entire thing. Let's put it that way. Then we have Rufio with 1985 is the album. I've heard of Rufio before, I think. So, yeah. Give them a listen. Why the heck not, right? It's bargain bag after all. And then the last CD in this bargain bag. Ooh, that one went pretty far. We have oh a classical album, Barber, Adagio and Symphony Number no. One, Baltimore Symphony Orchestra conducted by David Zinman. Right? Who knows? I might like it, right? And now for the bargain bag spotlight album of August 2021, uh, and this is actually a kind of a new thing because this is a viewer request. This is, I believe, the first official viewer request uh, review that I have. Uh, not that I've been particularly averse to it before, it's just, you know, my, I opened up the floor, so to speak, in my last uh, live stream, if you recall, asking people if they had any requests for reviewing Bargain Bag Spotlight CDs, and this one won out, I guess you'd say. It is Jagged Little Pill by Alanis Morissette. Yeah. If you haven't heard of this album by now, you must have been living under a rock. It hit number one in 13 countries. It won both Grammys and Junos for Album of the Year and Best Rock Album, as well as the Junos for Single of the Year and Songwriter of the Year in two consecutive years. And those aren't the only Grammys or Junos that she got, or, or that this album got. Uh, now, most people, particularly us Americans, keep on assuming that this is Alanis's first album, and even sometimes I forget that it, that it isn't. Uh, but it is actually her third. Her first two albums were Canadian-only releases and followed much more of a pop formula. I would assume much like Tiffany or Debbie Gibson, but I've never heard them, so I wouldn't know. And uh, I'm not sure I would want to listen to those two albums, because with as great as this one is, I cannot imagine her coming close to being the force of nature that she was on this album. Now, if I have one complaint about Alanis uh, as, as, when it comes to this album, it's that I'm not fond of the deliberate voice crack thing that she does, uh, which is most obvious in the songs You Ought to Know and Hand in My Pocket. It might happen on a couple other songs. Uh, it's the same reason that I've never been really crazy about Dolores O'Riordan and some of the Cranberry singles. Just that voice crack just kind of 
grates on my nerves for some reason, like kind of like nails on a chalkboard for me sometimes. Uh, but at the same time, neither Dolores nor Alanis would be who they are without that little affectation. But I think um, Alanis basically stopped using it after this album, uh, and thankfully he, she keeps it to a minimum on this album. But yes, this album has those two singles, as well as Head Over Feet, You Learn, and Ironic. And let's talk about that song for a second here. It has been well established that the situations she mentions in the lyrics, Rain on Your Wedding Day, A Free Ride When You've Already Paid, are not actually irony, but merely bad luck. But then I'm wondering if that might have been her sly intent all along, that mislabeling those scenarios as irony is, in fact, in itself the irony. It makes you think, doesn't it? But anyway, that, that, at that we can only speculate. But anyway, the good songs do not stop with the hit singles. As, as many of them as there were, probably what, at least half the track listing was hit singles. This is pretty close to a perfect album, I've got to say. Um, the moods of the songs are varied from ballads to rockers. Uh, the lyrics span a variety of subjects from finding self-worth underneath your own insecurities to ending a toxic relationship despite your lingering attractions to that person. And the vocals are well delivered, and the instrumentals are excellent. I mean, there's really not a thing to dislike about this album, except my little, minor little nitpick about her voice cracking. Uh, one thing that it kind of was kind of interesting was I found out that Dave Navarro of Jane's Addiction and Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers feature on guitar and bass, respectively, on You Oughta Know. And uh, Ben Montench of Tom Petty's Heartbreakers plays organ on half the tracks on this album. Uh, but it says something to Alanis' talent the, and the album's legacy that I didn't realize they were players until I read it on Wikipedia last week. Uh, but yes, not only would I say that this is one of the best albums of the 90s period, uh, I wouldn't hesitate to put Alanis Morissette up on the list of Canada's finest musical exports of all time, alongside Brian Adams, Joni Mitchell, Leonard Cohen, Michael Bublé, and others I'm probably forgetting about, and this album is the biggest reason why. And I don't think the presence of women in rock music would be what it is today without Alanis and the phenomenon that this album was. Uh, she has influenced dozens of female artists since then, including Katy Perry and her own uh, fellow countryman or countrywoman, Avril Lavigne. So yes, uh, as you can tell, I cannot say enough good things about this album. I've got her four subsequent albums on CD as well, and while they're all really good, they just cannot top this one. I mean, this is just a fantastic album. If you have not heard it yet, which hopefully you have by now, uh, I would highly, highly recommend this. Uh, take a dive into it, and it's I can't think of a better place to start when it comes to music of the 90s. Fantastic album. Okay, now let's go ahead and open the second of the two bargain bags. And I would comment as I'm opening about how many individual bags I have left before the end of bargain bag, but I didn't count before I set the camera up to do this video, so I'll count next month. Meantime, as I end that mindless chatter, or pointless chatter, Peekaboo ICCDs, and let's go ahead and get started here. What do we have here? Paul Geng, G-E-N-G, and I cannot help to pr I cannot hope to pronounce the title of this album. Nemocene, I guess is how you pronounce it. But anyway, I have no idea what this is. So, so much for that commentary. Right? Then we have Los Angeles Acoustic. Acoustic uh, looks like a uh, it's a compilation. Edna Swap, which I have heard of before, I'm sure. Lawrence Lean, Pomegranate, Honey Slide. So yeah. A group of artists that I don't know what the... I mean, well, obviously they're all LA-based artists, and they're all doing acoustic songs. That's for as far as I can glean from the album title. Yeah. Really, really wise of me to do that, huh? Then we have Dove or Dove, Journey to Eden. Um, this is another, another one that I cannot make any sort of comments on because I do not recognize it at all, but it is still sealed. So which means the CD is most likely in good condition. Then we have Sonic Joyride with the CD You'll Never Know. I don't see any track listing on here, so I have no idea if it's a single or if it's a full album. So, cause yeah, see, that's all that's on the back. So, I am just full of not being able to say anything about these CDs. 
We have, oh, This Perfect Day. I've heard of these guys before. Did I even actually buy the CD at once? What, at one point? I, I have no idea. But uh, it kind of looks like maybe the stuff that I might like kind of jangle popish. That's just the vibe that I get from the cover art, a jangle pop band, which was pretty prevalent in the early 90s. Oh, this is 1995. So that's one that I've got the most, I'm holding out the most hope for liking is that one. We have Jimmy Cozier or Cozier. The name sounds familiar. Why does he sound familiar? I don't know. We'll check it out. And then the final CD. We have American Ambulance all over the map. Not sure what these guys do, but somebody, somebody, the last owner of the CD apparently didn't like track number six because they crossed it out and wrote no. Oh, programmers and are advised to evaluate track six based on the political climate of their respective broadcast markets. So it's a politically leaning song. Oh, it's called Hey John Ashcroft. Yeah, that could be an interesting one. So, Anyway, I guess that's it. <laughs> well, anyway, another Bargain Bag Month is over with way too soon, and that'll do it for the Bargain Bag for August of 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends, and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.